Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad. All of these men, all of these men died of, of, of old age or old age indu- sickness induced from being old. Every single one of these men died. Old, old guys just died from natural causes. All of these men were riddled with sin. All of these men were, were broken men like you and I. All of these men experienced a peaceful death. But the sinless man, Jesus Christ, the God man, the perfect man, the man who, quote, deserved a peaceful death. He deserved, he did nothing wrong. He sinned against no one. He was only beloved. He was only, or sorry, he was only full of love. He was only full of, he was, he was full of love. He was full of compassion, full of grace, full of perfection. This God man, Jesus, sinned not against any one person ever or against God, did not die peacefully like these other men, but rather was brutally beaten. He was murdered, he was whipped, he was crucified, he was lied about, he was sold out by his friends. He was the only good man to ever live. He was the only righteous man, truly righteous on his own. Jesus Christ, the man whom, if we look at in the course of time, go, you know, who deserved, quote, in our, in our fallen minds, think who deserved the peaceful life, the peaceful death, the peaceful, peaceful passing. It wasn't Abraham. He was foolish. Isaac, foolish. Jacob, foolish. Confucius, foolish. Buddha, foolish. Muhammad, foolish. Every single one of these men rebellious against God. Jesus Christ rebelled not one second of time in his life. Yet, was brutally beaten, executed, and murdered. Why? That's for guys like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Muhammad, Buddha, you, me, the world. What Jesus did was he was, he was brutally beaten because two reasons. One, he said he was God. Bold claim. All these guys, all these prophets, all these men say that they were pointing to a way of living, a way to solve the sin problem. But they couldn't do it, so no one killed them. Jesus says, I can fix the sin problem. I can change the course of humanity. I can get you to God. I can forgive your transgressions. I can forgive your sins because I'm God in the flesh. So they killed him. Second reason why they killed him, he says he's the only way. He says, I'm the only way. He says that those, anyone who comes after me, not true. Buddha came before Jesus. So Jesus was saying, hey, the Buddha, not the God, not the man, not the way. Uh, Confucius, no way. The guy who's coming, Muhammad, not the way. I am the only way, Jesus says. So they killed him. And in doing so, what Jesus does on the cross, which we celebrate on Good Friday, is he, and we'll talk about it at length at that time, but he He dies in the place of sinners. He takes a wicked, brutal beating on your behalf, on my behalf. Not just on your behalf, but on behalf of sin. The problem we've been trying to solve. He literally gives a a lethal blow to sin, Satan, and death. Well, there's a grave enshrined for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And for us, when we die, there will be some sort of way you could opt into uh, being memorialized or remembered. But we will all die. But here's the deal. Those who are in Christ, death has no more sting. Death is not the end. We're actually told that when a Christian dies, that they 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 don't just go into the ground but they're immediately at present. They're at home with the Lord. Well, there's no more pain, no more sin, no more suffering. We're told in the New Testament that it's actually gain for the Christian to die. 